Hi, this is Philip Ador, founder of NCLEX RN45 Day Challenge. In this video, I'm going to be talking about urinary tract infections. It is important to revise the anatomy of the urinary system, specifically the urinary tract. Let us begin by looking at the male. Here, we have the kidneys. Coming off the kidneys is the ureter, which carries urine into the bladder. Here, we have the glands, pinnies, and urethra. Below the bladder, we have the prostate. Coming past the prostate and into the urethra is the seminal vesicles, an important part of the semen production. Then we have the vas deferens, the actual tube that runs from the testis, and the testis is where the sperm is produced. The female anatomy is very similar, except importantly, they have, they have shorter urethra. With the shorter urethra means that they have increased risk of developing urinary tract infection. Causative agents of UTI are mainly E. coli, 90% of cases. Others include Enterobacteria, Proteus moribellus, and Klebsiella pneumonia. They essentially enter the urethra and colonize the area or the bladder. Because of, what, because of a variety of reasons, and the risk factors eventually can cause urinary tract infections in a UTI. The bacteria will cause a lower UTI, usually, and this can be either cystitis, which is an infection of the bladder, prostitis, which is the infection of the prostate gland, and urethritis, which is the infection of the urethra. Infections of the lower urinary tract can progress and cause an upper urinary tract infection. This is where infections affect the kidneys, and this is called the pyelonephritis. Pyelonephritis is a serious and can cause acute renal failure. Interestingly, as we all know, urinary tract infections are more common in women. And up to one third of women with the symptoms of urinary tract infections have actually negative midstream urine samples, revealing any form of infection. How does a UTI occur? Let's look at the pathophysiology. Here again is the kidneys, the ureter, and the bladder, and the urethra. Here we have the inferior vena cava, and the renal vein comes from the kidneys and enters into the inferior vena cava. Behind the inferior vena cava, we have the descending aorta, which will supply the kidneys with the branching renal artery. So what initially happens when contamination of bacteria contaminates the lower urinary tract because of a certain risk factors. Let's just say the bacteria is E. coli because it is the most common in 80% of cases. They initially colonize the urethra and the bladder. This triggers an inflammatory response in the lower urinary tract. Neutrophils are then recruited to this area. As you can see in the bladder, you have bacteria and you have the neutrophils. The bacteria multiply and they're able to evade the immune system because of a certain virulent factors. E. coli, for example, can bind into the cell in the lower urinary tract and hide from immune cells. The bacteria can form biofilms, and biofilm is any group of microorganisms in which they stick to each other and are often these microorganisms adhere to surfaces and it allows them to survive. If this urinary tract infection progresses and left untreated or if the patient is immunocompromised and has a risk factors, the bacteria can ascend towards the kidneys and then colonize and then the kidneys causing it uh, upper urinary tract infection. And then from here, if left untreated, the bacteria can spread into the circulations via the renal veins, causing the worst case septic shock. A big risk factor for developing urinary tract infections, especially in females, is urinary catheterization. Same thing happens, the, cath the catheter can introduce infections straight into the bladder if not done hygienically. A bacteria colonizes the bladder, initiating immune response. Neutrophils enters further promoting into inflammation. Fibrinogen accumulates in the catheter, providing an ideal environment for the attachment of uropathogens that expresses fibrinogen binding proteins. After this bacterial initial attachment to the fibrinogen coated catheters, the bacteria can multiply and they can again form the biofilms, promote epithelial damage and concede infections of the kidneys. And so the same story occurs. In pregnancy, urinary tract infections are very common. Catheterization will almost result in urinary tract infections. 
The reason being is not only the urethra is shorter in women, but during pregnancy, progesterone relaxes smooth muscles, causing stasis of urine, which allows for colonizations, especially up to the kidneys. During pregnancy, it is important to perform urine analysis cause not only are urinary tract infections more common, but also asymptomatic. Untreated urinary tract infections during pregnancy can have consequences for growing infant in neutral. So now let's talk about the risk factors for UTI. This includes pregnancy, being female, menopause because it's dry in the vagina and in, in the urethra, sexual intercourse, condoms, catheterizations, urinary tract malformations, and urinary stones are also a risk factors. The signs and symptoms of UTI depend on where the infection is. If it is lower urinary tract infections, or if it is upper urinary tract infection. Upper being the more severe. Lower urinary tract infections cause dysuria, pain upon urination, frequency, hematuria or blood in the urine, suprabupic discomfort, and burning urgency sensations with the urination. The urine is often described as being cloudy and having an offensive smell. Upper urinary tract infections can have the same types of symptoms, but classically, malay, fevers, regals, vomiting, and loin flank pain radiating to the back. There can be signs of shock if the infection is more severe. The classic triad for upper urinary tract infections or high-low nephritis is vomiting, flank cloid pain, and fever. Another way to categorize UTI is either being complicated or uncomplicated. To put it simply, uncomplicated UTI, the renal tract and functions are normal. With complicated, there is the decreased renal functions based on investigations and symptoms and potentially is accompanied by abnormal urinary tract. Let's go through an algorithm of managing urinary tract infections. It is important to remember that if there is a discharge or itch with the signs of UTI, Perform a genital examinations with swab or check for a sexual transmitted infections or STIs. A characteristic of STI is having discharge and a fishy smell within the mucus. Other investigations that are performed importantly are a urine dipstick, which will show hematuria, proteinuria, positive nitrates, and the presence of urine microscopy can be performed as well as a urine microscopy culture and sensitivity. Full blood count to check for infections, CRP beta HCG serum to check for ectopic and is a differential diagnosis, especially in young females and adults. For UTI, if the urinary dipstick is positive, treat with empirical antibiotics. If the dipstick is negative, but you still suspect of UTI, send for microscopy culture and sensitivity. A diagnosis of a UTI is having a bacterial growth on a culture plate of more than 10,000 culinary colony forming units per ml. As mentioned, urinary tract infections are common in female. So if a female patient presents with uncomplicated UTI, she is most likely to be able to go home discharged with oral antibiotics. The treatment of UTI is essentially empirical antibiotics for lower urinary tract infections. A 3 to 7 day course consisting of either trimetoprim or nitrofurantoin or amoxicillin. Upper UTI are generally more serious and require IV antibiotics initially and until the fever has settled and then moving on to oral antibiotics. The course of antibiotics are generally longer with upper urinary tract infections. Finally, it is important to know when to refer to a renal specialist or urologist. Refer to a urologist if there is a failure of the patients to respond to antibiotic treatment. If there is a recurrent UTI, which is defined as having three or more in one year. Refer to a urologist if a man have a symptoms of upper urinary tract infections. And this is because it is very uncommon for men to develop upper UTI and potentially could be a result of more sinister anatomical abnormality. Finally, refer to a urologist also if there is a significant hematuria. Preventive measures for UTI include drinking more water, antibiotic prophylaxis, especially for females with recurrent UTI, 
and cranberry juice, although there are arguments for and against this.